Okay, you recall me saying that this painting inspired the first otter mount I ever did. And it was a mount I did for myself. So this otter that I've skinned and uh, posed the carcass is, I, I'm, uh, I'm trying to recreate this pose. And I'm trying to do it with this carcass. Now, what I did over the weekend, <laughs> I uh, put him in the fridge. Well, I, I took him out last week to thaw him. And uh, I built this little framework around him here, like so, so that I could stitch through uh, the carcass at his spine and be able to lift him up to match that rise on the back in the, uh, in the painting that I like. Now, what's the big deal about doing it this time as opposed to the first time I did it? Well, the first time I mounted my otter, an otter for myself, I wrapped the body. This time, because it's modern times, I'm looking to sculpt the mannequin in that pose. And I want to get it exact, as close to exact as I can, of that pose. Now, in order to do that, you could see here, the body really kind of just caved in over here. It sank, okay? And I'm not getting a true representation of the spine as I want it to appear. The lumbar region is high enough, but I need the middle of, or the, at least the last third of the back to come up. So what I did was I wrapped it in cloths that I had soaked in a Kemmel 4 solution, Kemmel 4 in water, and wrapped it around the uh, otter and put him in the, on the bottom shelf, the bottom shelf, mind you, of my shop fridge, and hoping I would pull him out this morning and he would be all nice and pink again and he would be thawed. Well, I pulled him out, and uh, it's Monday, and I pulled him out, and he's still pretty damn frozen. So <laughs> I have two other animals I have to start on. I have a gray fox and I have a really large river otter that I have to get started measuring, uh, or they're going to go bad in my fridge. But... Um, what I've also done uh, in my in my uh, my my bench vise, I took a straight six inch three corner needle, heated it with a uh, a small torch, and uh, curved it by holding it with the pliers and gently curved it. Now this is meant to go through the body at the spine through several points on the body to go through. Oh, it is going through. Okay, let me see if I can go through and to be able to pull thread through and essentially lift it up and just tie it off to this cross beam here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if I can get this to go through. Or if he's still too frozen to do this. Well, right now it's looking like he's a little, st still a little too frozen to do this with. Oh, no, here we go, here we go, here we go. Are you coming out the other side? All right, he's coming out the other side. Let me make an adjustment here. That's way too low. Okay, I may have to heat this and, or just, there we go, now he's on the other side. Okay, now he's, directly across the other side of the spine where it went in on this side. So now what to do is push through. There we are. Now I'm going to take some cape thread. It's a double waxed strong cape thread. I'm going to cut a piece of it off. I'm going to thread it through the needle and using the, a double thread I'm going to go through the carcass and as it thaws I will be able to lift it. So I'm going to thread through. Now let's get in a little closer if we can so you can see what the heck All I'm right. doing. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I've got the thread right here. I'm going to tie it off like so just gonna make a just a whatever it's called a square knot slip knot whatever the hell this is called just a little knot and I'm gonna pull well, first push continue to push 
push and now pull the wire through the carcass on the other side. There we go. And I'm going to bring it up over the top. And you can see how it's starting to lift just a little bit. And that's, that's great. That's great. That's what I want. Like so. Whoop. Okay. The knot slipped free from itself. Let me retie my knot. Let me double tie it this time. I'm going to double tie it so it cannot slip away from itself. Here we go. Now, a little light on the subject. Lovely. There's a thread. Let's go through. I might use a little longer thread for the next couple of times I, I go through. But it's, be, it's because it's still frozen. That's why I'm having so much trouble with it. All right. Now, what I need to do, this needs to continue to thaw. So I can't do another one until this is fully thawed through. There we go. Let's just go around here. And here, let's just go around one thread like so. Don't let it loosen it. Don't let it loosen the grip. Actually, let me see if I lift the two pieces of thread like so. Maybe I can get a little more height. And it did. It worked. That worked. Okay. Now, hold that down. And I'm just going to wrap it around and wrap it around and wrap it around. And slowly and slowly, I'm going to just wrap this around, wrap this around, wrap it around so that it holds. I just want it to hold at this point. And I have gotten some lift here. I have gotten just a little bit of lift, and that's good. When it thaws some more, I will lift some more. But in the meantime and in between time, I need this needle to be free. And I'm going to go right through here on the carcass, just under the spine. So I'm going to run it through again and thread it the way All I just right, did. I've got him stitched through in a couple of places here, and I'm repositioning the body as we go. Now, bearing in mind, you remember during the skinning process, I discovered this leg has a broken bone in the leg. I haven't dissected through yet to find out where the bone is broken, but I've got a piece of this. This is galvanized steel. Uh, I'm sorry, this is non-galvanized steel wire, so it's, it's very, very flexible and allows you to bend it very easily as opposed to the galvanized. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some of this wire, I'm going to put it under the chest at the armpit of this foreleg with the broken bone I want to try and lift this leg. I want to try and get some height on this broken leg here by putting this into the foam because the leg itself cannot give me, and you see how soft this wire is, it bends. It's almost like it makes really good, arm. this is a good armature wire to use when you're sculpting uh, uh, the skeleton. You're putting together the skeleton for a sculpture. All right, okay, now, now we've got some height in this leg here now, which is what I wanted. And I'm just going to reposition it a bit. Let's get a, a new insertion point in the foam with this foot. I want it to be even with the other foot, so I turn it as I work on it and look over the top. And I want to be sure, see, he, he's tending to lean this way a little bit because I guess the way the cross members are just kind of on a on an angle so what I'll do is I'm going to he's beginning to thaw nicely now which is what I wanted uh, so I'm going to not worry about jacking his head up so much at this point and I, I just want to get everything kind of situated I've got uh, long large loop head pins that I'm putting through the foam to hold the foam pieces together. And that's really working well. 
Let me get this here. I know I'm blocking the camera, but uh, I got to be able to do what I'm doing. I got to be able to do what I need to do. Now, on this side of the otter, to get him to his body to stay straight, I think what I'll do is I'm going to put a, a wire against this side of his body as he thaws. So I'm going to make another loop and I'm going to put it into the foam right against his body. I'm going to go about the width of his ribs. I'm going to insert this like so, but I'm going to I want to get it I want to get him pushed over just a bit. So I do that. Then I insert this body of uh, this wire into the foam leaning it tightly against the body as I do okay and I think this will hold the position if I bend in a little bit on it bend toward his opposite side a little bit so that it kind of pushes into him keeps him straight all right now let me step back here and see what I've got. That looks that looks nice. I like the arch in the back. If you remember, it matches the little painting back there. Well, really, it's really starting to come into its own. And I think now I will be able to put him into the freezer. But first, I want to spray him down again. See how he's getting a little pink, which is nice. He's getting his pink, the pink color of his meat returning. And I want to, I want to saturate this a little more. And I think, I re what I really need is, I need for this, these hind legs to be forward more. So I'm going to pull this wire here. I have two hind legs, I have wires through both hind legs. Do the hind feet. <clears throat> and I'm going to lift this back side up. I'm going to pull these feet back like so. Put them down into the foam, matching on both sides as I do. And get his heels in the same place. His little tootsies in the same place. All right. Here. It's a little slick. <laughs> so that's a little slick. Push this large loop head pin down right tight against the foot. You see how this skin is, how the muscle, musculature is coming along here, folding over the front, and it's allowing the belly to come down and hit the ground. That's what I want. That is exactly what I want. Right there. Right there. Now the water, the chemical force solution is, is allowing the meat to absorb some of the solution, which is allowing it to thaw. It's penetrating it, allowing it to thaw. Now, this foreleg looks good. I'm going to go around the other side and check on the opposite foot. Well, why don't I just turn them around here. Turn the otter around. Do, 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 do. I can make sure. Oh, okay, no, not good, good, good. He's nice and he's coming along nice and square now. Looks nice. What I need to do is push this leg in against the. No, oh, maybe just a little. We'll push this foreleg in a little tighter against the body. So lift the pin. Pull the body towards me. Push the leg in. Reset the pin all the way down to the foot, to his little hand. And you see the belly is making contact with the ground. Well, this here is a little piece of foam that was holding the back of the body in position. But I want the belly to come down all the way now. That's it. I want his guts to hit the ground. He's still kind of frozen right through here. He's still, he's still a little frozen right through the middle. But you can see, here's his last rib. You can see what I've got here. We've got the lumbar region with a nice curvature leading up, and then the spine is curving down to the front. I want to bring the shoulder blades, I want to go down in between the shoulder blades, 
And of course this can all be modeled in once he becomes clay. How about we put a little piece of foam, we'll stack some foam under the foreleg here, just to kind of lift, like so. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, looking good, looking good, looking good. Get him to lean over a little more again. Push these wires in some. Push it down a bit. Whoop, a little too much. Okay, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, rawhide. All right, now we're going to go under this foreleg as well. I'll lift him up. And a lot of manual moving around here. All right. Okay, good. That's good. Very nice. Oh, very, 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 very nice. <laughs> I know. I was crazy, but that's okay. I'd be crazy. All right, now I want to readjust the neck. So I'm going to lift these and pull the pins up on here. It's like hand grenade. I'm going to pull the pins. I'm going to pull the pins. Holy moly. I'm going to bring this forward so that it tilts in a little more rather than be right directly under the neck. I'm going to tilt this in. Put the pins down on both sides. Through the pins into the main base. And now we've got, I think, a nice pose here. Let me get this in the right place. Move this in a little bit. Get this under his chin. Okay, let me check this by my viewfinder on my camera here. Oh, that looks just super, thanks for asking. That looks super, thanks for asking. Super. Now, to keep his tail elevated at the same height as the body or close to it, I'm going to pin as right now it's laying on the table. So I'm going to go ahead and pin a piece of foam in place to the main base, the main First foam base. I, I got two blocks of foam here. First one goes into the bottom and it's level with the table. The next one, a little T-pin in there. The next one will go like so. We'll hold the tail in place. And I'm going to secure this foam in two places. I'm going to secure it, one, to the main floor of the foam at the back, and then at the front. So we're going to go through a long way like so, and it's going to go right in. There we are. Now I'm going to lift the base of the tail. I'm going to pin it down in place on here. All right. Now I'm going to pin the tail in place. I'm going to try and go right through the joint with a T-pin, like so. Use the pliers to push it through. There we are. I think we got it. We got it. Right there. We got it. Now I'll cross this so that the top of the pin is in tight contact, I mean right against the joint, so it's, it's going to be good. And then I'll take this other T-pin and go in like so and secure the, uh, the entire package together here, like so. Okay, all right. So now we've got this lovely otter carcass, right where I want it. Okay. Now the thing to do is to, his head is in the same position as the head of the painting. See how it's elevated like so. I might keep it like that or I may change it when it becomes a clay, which would be very easy for me to do. 
Uh, it would be a simple matter of cutting the head off the clay. Um, I will be making a uh, alginate mold of the head. I'm going to really moisten this head up. Make an alginate mold of the head and then make a casting of the head in, in clay or wax and then build over that and I will probably use that. I'll make a perfected head so I, I can look at it all around and whatnot and I will use that for the form. So this head is just there for now, okay? Uh, I want to make sure this broken bone gets situated nicely. Okay, his, his elbow is elevated off the ground like as in the painting that I love so much. I think, I think he's ready to go back into the freezer. Uh, so let me go around the back side and make sure he's okay. I don't want to turn it at this point because I'm just going to be picking it up to uh, take it to the freezer. Oops. Good. See the belly down over here on this side? Nice. With a little more elevation in the rib cage than I'd like, but I can, I can compensate that with the clay and mark that against my measurements when I, when I put them together. All right, I think that looks pretty darn good right now. So yeah, he's ready for the freezer. Yeah, he's ready for the freezer. Let's take a couple of stills of this, shall we? Yes, let's.